everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a book haul. So in the months of April, May, and June I went a bit overboard and I think I hauled like a little over 80 books so we're gonna try to fly through these as quickly as possible. So first up I'm gonna talk about the books I bought on Kindle and the first three I got were Aru Shaw and the End of Time, Aru Shaw and the Song of Death, and Aru Shaw and the Tree of Wishes. These are the first three books in the Pandava series by Roshani Chakshi. I've read the first two, I haven't read the third one yet, and I saw one day that they had a deal where they were 99 cents each on Kindle, so I picked up all three, though at some point I would love to have physical copies. I really love the first two, and I'm looking forward to at some point picking up the third. Next, I grabbed Dragon Speaker by Cora Forstner. So this was one I noticed uh, cost nothing on Kindle. Actually, one of you suggested it to me, and I checked it out and it sounded good, so I snagged it. In this book, we seem to be following Princess Gwendolyn, who doesn't believe that dragons are real until one day one lands in front of her. Despite growing up privileged, she sees the injustice all around her and is looking forward to her chance to ascend the throne so that she can restore justice and fairness to her kingdom. The description also mentioned that it's a new fantasy series in the vein of Christopher Paolini and Rick Riordan. If you don't know who they are, Rick Riordan is the author of the Percy Jackson series, which I've really loved. And Christopher Paolini is the author of the Aragon series. So since I've enjoyed both those series, I thought it was a no-brainer to check this one out. The next three are all historical fiction mysteries by London Lovett. These are another three that I saw were free on Kindle, so I snapped them up, and that would be Death in the Park, Marigolds and Murder, and Murder on Lot B. I really like historical fiction mysteries, so when I saw that they cost me nothing to grab, I totally snagged them. Next up, I'm going to run you through my Book of the Month picks. First up, I got Liberty by Caitlin Greenridge. This is a historical fiction that follows... Liberty, who is living in Reconstruction-era Brooklyn and kind of follows her life. Next, I got Arsenic and Adobe by Mia P. Manasala, and this seems to be a kind of cozy mystery, the first in a series, and it has culinary vibes. It says, the first book in a new culinary cozy series full of sharp humor and delectable dishes, one of which might just be killer. I love cozy mysteries, and this one sounded good, so I snagged it. Next, I got People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. I believe this follows two friends who had a bit of falling out, but they used to go on vacation and they decide to go on one more vacation for old time's sake and see if they can work through their issues. I really liked Beach Read by Emily Henry. And so when I saw this one, it was a no brainer to grab it. Next, I got Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. And I believe I heard somebody describe this as a Native American Nancy Drew type thing. So when I heard that, I thought I would check it out. Next, I grabbed Beach Read by Emily Henry. This was one of my extra books, and as I said just a second ago, I loved Beach Read, and I wanted my own copy of it, and since I had already had people on vacation, I thought it made sense to get Beach Read in the Book of the Month version, too, so they'd match on my bookshelf. Next, I got The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. This is a thriller, and I believe it follows a mother and daughter. I tend to go into my thrillers blind, so I don't know much more about it, but I remember when I read the description, like the little description on book of the month. It sounded interesting, so I grabbed it. Next is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. Casey McQuiston is the author of Ray Ray and Royal Blue, and I love that book, so when I saw this book was available, I knew I was going to snag it. It follows August, who has just moved to New York City, and she ends up meeting Jane on the train and quickly realizes that every time she goes on the train, Jane is there and finds out that Jane is kind of stuck on the train and is actually from the 1970s and they have to figure out how Jane got stuck on the train and out of her time. And my last book of the month is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Taylor Jenkins Reid is the author of Daisy Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of William Finlay and Hugo, both of which I love. So when I saw that her newest book was on book of the month, I had to grab it. Next up are two books I got from an Owl Crate box and that is... The Elephant in the Room by Holly Goldberg Sloan and The One and Only Ivan by Catherine Applegate. I've heard a lot about this book and The One and Only Bob. I don't know which one's first, but when I saw the unboxings and saw this was in the box, I was super psyched about the idea of being able to have a copy of it. 
As for the elephant in the room, I don't know much about it, but the cover is stunning. The back says, feelings travel even when people can't. And there's a blurb here from Cynthia Katohata, a Newbery Medal winning author. And it says, the elephant in the room is a gorgeous and emotional novel about injustice and love, about elephant poop about the capacity of animals to ease our pain, and most especially about the joy you feel when you can return the favor and ease theirs. I loved every page. Mm. I want to read this book for the cover alone. Like I said, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I really thought this box was amazing between the two books and you got this like cute little elephant pen and a huge elephant eraser and then a stuffed elephant named Leroy and I leave him on top of my library books. I will try to remember to insert a picture so that you can see the rest of the stuff from the box. Next are two books I got for myself. The first is uh, Goldilocks, Wanted Dead or Alive by Chris Colfer. This is a graphic novel set in the Land of Stories realm, and we're obviously going to be following Goldilocks. I love this series and Chris Colfer's writing, so when I saw that he had a new book coming out, it was a no-brainer to pick it up. And the other book I got is Path of a Warrior by Aaron Hunter. This contains three novellas in the Warrior series, Red Tail's Debt, Tawny Pelt's Clan, and Shadow Star's Life. I've been slowly working on filling in the handful of Warriors books I don't own. And if you're new to my channel, Warriors is a series about forest cats who live in clans and have to try to coexist. I've been doing a reread slash catch-up read this year. And so... This will make catching up on the novellas easier as I haven't read a single novella in the series yet. Next are the books that were gifted to me. First is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. My mom saw this while she was at a Dollar General and knew that I wanted to read Little Women. So when she saw it, she grabbed me a copy. Another book my mom picked up for me is Game of Shadows by Erica Lewis. I believe she saw this at Dollar Tree and it's some sort of YA fantasy that she thought I might find interesting and I mean, for a buck, why not? I'm willing to give it a try. And this last book I was gifted was from my grandmother, and it's Betty White, If You Ask Me, and of course you won't. And I believe this is an autobiography by Betty White. And it was a book my grandma had, and she thought I would enjoy reading it, so she passed it along to me. Next, I won three books in giveaways off of Goodreads. The first is The Auntie Book by Raphael Simon. This is a middle grade and it says, Do you ever wish everyone would go away? The Auntie Book is the answer. Because Mickey can't resist the ad inside his pack of gum. After all, lately he's been angry all the time at his divorced parents, at his sister, and at his sister's bully of a boyfriend. He mails in his coupon, but when the book arrives, it's blank, except for one line of instruction. To erase it, write it. He fills the pages with all the things and people he would like to disappear. And the next morning he finds himself wandering an auntie world, one in which everything and everyone familiar is gone. Or are they? Mickey has begun an adventure full of humor and surprise, a fantastical, slightly meaningful quest for belonging that is a new classic in the making. So this sounds quite interesting and I'm looking forward to reading it. Then I won High Country Justice by Nick James and this is a historical fiction following a frontiersman named Caleb Marlowe and when I saw it on Goodreads it sounded interesting and I'm looking forward to checking this out. And the last one I won was The Ballad of Laurel Springs by Janet Beard and let's see. It says, from the internationally best-selling author of The Atomic City Girls, a provocative new novel about multiple generations of women in one East Tennessee family haunted by violence and redeemed by their rich inheritance of folk music. So this sounds like a historical fiction that spans multiple generations in a family. So I'm looking forward to also checking this one out. So for the last section of this video, I'm going to be talking about the books I got from Book Outlet. I put in three orders in the months of April, May, and June mainly because I had my dad's birthday in April, Mother's Day in May, and I had three birthdays for little ones in my life, and I try to buy them books and instill that love of reading, and I tend to wait for the good deals to go on when I order books, so I ended up with three completely separate orders. First, I'm going to talk about the books I got from Book Outlet that I have already read and, and got so that I could have a copy on my shelves. Then I will talk about the books that I got that I haven't read yet. So first up we have Tilly and the Book Wanderers by Anna James and in this series we're following Tilly who has the ability to travel into books and sometimes characters can wander out of books to talk to her. I've read the first three books in the series and I really love this series so I am excited to have the first book on my shelves. Next is The Switch by Beth O'Leary, and this follows a grandmother and a granddaughter who swap houses, and 
it gives them both a different perspective on their lives and I really really love this book and I can definitely see myself rereading it in the future so I'm glad that I have a copy on my shelves. The next two are Dear Mr. Henshaw and Strider by Beverly Cleary. I read these when I was a kid and I haven't read them since but I vaguely remember really enjoying them so when I saw them on Book Outlet I thought it would be cool to add to the collection of books I loved as a kid. Next I got Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first book in his YA sci-fi series and I believe the third book comes out later this year and we're following Spensa who is trying to kind of overcome the fact that her father betrayed her people. She really wants to be a pilot just like him but people are suspicious of her because of what her dad did. I've loved both the first two books but I know that I'm gonna want to reread both of them before I read book three and kind of refresh my memory on everything that was going on. So I'm glad I have a copy of this for when the time comes for my reread. Next I got The Blood Spell by CJ Redwine. This is the fourth book in the Raven Spire series and I own the first three so I'm excited to have the fourth one to add to my collection. Next is The Shadows of Doom by Jennifer Bell. This is the second book in the Uncommoner series and in this series we're following Ivy and Seb who learn that there is a whole another world underground called Londonor and that objects there have uncommon abilities and I've really enjoyed both the first book and this book so I'm glad to have a copy of this on my shelves. Next is Hope and Other Punchlines by Julie Buxbaum. This follows a young girl whose picture was taken on 9-11 and is kind of famous and now she's a teenager and she just wants to have anonymity and she's at a summer camp where she meets a boy who once he finds out who she is is really interested in her because his life also changed on 9-11. I really love this book and I can definitely see myself rereading it at some point in the future. So next up I have Amelia Fang in the Barbaric Ball, The Unicorns of Glitteropolis, The Memory Thief, and The Rainbow Rangers. I've read the first three books in the Amelia Fang series. I haven't read The Rainbow Rangers yet, but I've absolutely adored the first three books and my library doesn't have any more. So when I saw that they were available on Book Outlet, I knew I wanted to snap them up. So I'm looking forward to having these on my shelves and reading book four. Next, I got Aunt Dimity and the Lost Prince, Aunt Dimity and the Wishing Well, Aunt Dimity and the Summer King, Aunt Dimity and the Widow's Curse, and Aunt Dimity and the Heart of Gold by Nancy Atherton. These are all books in the Aunt Dimity series. I own a bunch of them and I've been slowly working to fill in my collection. At some point in the near future, I really need to do a reread of this. Maybe that'll be one of my 2022 goals to do a complete reread of the Aunt Dimity series because I think book 25 comes out next year. And owning these five in addition to the ones I already own will definitely make that reread easier. And the last book I got that I've already read is Voyage of the Frostheart by Jamie Littler. This is the first book in the Frostheart series and we're following Ash who lives in a stronghold and in between the stronghold are these monsters so people don't typically leave the stronghold. However there are travelers that do go back and forth between the strongholds to deliver like supplies and goods and explore and two of these people happen to be Ash's parents and they left one day and nobody has seen them since. Ash also has the special ability to song weave but he tries to keep that under wraps since people think that song weaving means you can be controlled by the monsters but one day his secret gets out. Luckily the crew of the Frostheart is there and he ends up leaving the stronghold with them in search of what happened to his parents. I've read the first two books in this series. I absolutely love them. I need the third book like yesterday so I'm really excited to have this book on my shelves. I lied, I have one more set of books that I've read and that is the Murder Most Unladylike books. So I got a box set I want to say of, I think it's the first seven and like 5.5 I think is how it works. Anyways, I've read the first five books which is Murder Most Unladylike, Arsenic for Tea, First Class Murder, Jolly Foul Play, and A Mistletoe and Murder, I believe. I haven't read A Spoonful of Murder, Cream, Buns, and Crime, or Death in the Spotlight. I don't think. I believe, I believe Cream, Buns, and Crime is the like 0.5. This is a mystery series that follows Daisy and Hazel, and it's a historical fiction one, and I really enjoy the mystery aspect, and I've enjoyed getting to see Daisy and Hazel 
grow throughout the books. So yeah, some of these will be on my rod shelf and the others will be on my TBR shelf. But when I saw that they had a box set, I couldn't resist picking them up. So now on to the books from Book Outlet that I grabbed that I haven't read yet. First up, I've got Stay by Bobby Pyron. This says we're following Piper, whose family just moved into a homeless shelter. And she ends up coming across a sweet dog named Baby. And Baby feels lucky because he gets to live in a park with his person, Jewel. But Jewel isn't well, and there's only so much her baby can do to help her. When they're together, Piper and Baby feel like they matter. So when Baby and his person are torn apart, Piper knows she's the only one who can help. But that means learning to trust her new friends and herself before Baby gets taken away for good. So it sounds like it's going to be dual perspective, and we're going to get the perspective of Piper and perspective of Baby the dog. And I like books that have animal POVs. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Next is A Problematic Paradox by Elliot Sappingfield. And I believe this is a middle grade sci-fi. There's a blurb here that says it's like Harry Potter, but with science instead of magic. Nicola is exactly the smart female protagonist the sci-fi genre needs. And I'm always on the lookout for more middle grade sci-fi as some of my favorite books as a kid were middle grade sci-fi. And I feel like it is much harder to find really good middle grade sci-fi. So when I was doing the book outlet order, I was definitely on the lookout for those. So I'm looking forward to checking this out. Next, I got Crow Feathers Trial and Squirrel Flight's Hope, which are both super editions in the Warrior series that I didn't already have. And I'm looking forward to getting to learn more about Crow Feather and Squirrel Flight. Next, I got Moonshadow by Aaron Downing. And we're following Lucia, who was born during a lunar eclipse, and her mom told her that eclipses are magical, but she doesn't buy into any of that nonsense. But on her 13th birthday, the night of the next lunar eclipse, something strange happens. When the moon slips into the Earth's shadow, Lucia's shadow slips out. Now the shadow half waits for Lucia to sleep so it can come out and play. So I'm curious to see what happens with Lucia and her shadow. I thought that sounded like an interesting concept. Next is The Revenge of Magic by James Riley. It says, when magic returns to the real world, only children can unlock its dangerous power in this thrilling new series from the author of the New York Times best-selling Story Thieves. And the back says, magic has returned in spell books dug up around the world. One for the body, bones, and skin. One for the spirit, its spectral kin. One for the mind, thoughts, and dreams. One for the world, from dirt to streams. One for all space, wide and vast. One for all time, future and past. Seven from six, the rest on earth. One saves all, if proved their worth. So yeah, this sounds like the start to an interesting fantasy series. Next up, I grabbed Riders of the Realm Beneath the Weeping Clouds by Jennifer Lynn Alvarez. This is the third book in the Riders of the Realm series. Since I really enjoyed book one, it made sense to grab more books in the series. King of series I enjoyed, I got Warrior Princess by Jodie Lynn Anderson, which is the third book in the Maybird trilogy. I've read the first book and really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward at some point to diving back into this series. Then, because I enjoyed the Maybird trilogy, I grabbed Midnight at the Electric, also by Jodie Lynn Anderson. And in the inside, it says Kansas 2065, Oklahoma 1934, and England 1919. And it gives a little description for each of those time periods. But the bottom says, when their stories span thousands of miles and multiple generations, Lenore, Catherine, and Audrey's fate are entwined in ways both heartbreaking and hopeful. It sounds like an interesting novel that is going to span three very different time eras, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. Next, I got The Land of Yesterday by K.A. Reynolds. It says, after... Cecilia Dahl's little brother Celadon dies tragically. His soul goes where all souls go to the land of yesterday. Now Cecilia's beloved house's spirit is crumbling beyond repair. Her father is imprisoned by sorrow. And worst of all, her grief-stricken mother abandons the land of the living to follow Celadon. It's up to Cecilia to put her family back together, even if that means venturing into the dark and forbidden land of yesterday on her own. But if Cecilia is not careful, she might just become a lost soul herself, trapped forever in yesterday. So it sounds like this has some good family vibes and maybe a strong female protagonist who's going to do everything in her power to put her family back together. And I'm curious as to what the land of yesterday looks like and the adventures that Cecilia gets up to while there. Next, I got All Standing, the remarkable story of the Jeannie Johnston, the legendary Irish famine ship by Catherine Miles. This is a nonfiction and it says more than 1 million immigrants fled the Irish famine for North America and more than 100,000 of them perished aboard the coffin ships that crossed the Atlantic, but one small ship never lost a passenger. All Standing recounts the remarkable tale of the Jeannie Johnston and her ingenious crew whose 11 voyages are the stuff of legend. Why did these individuals succeed while so many others failed? And what new lives in America were the ship's passengers seeking? In this deeply researched and powerfully told story, acclaimed author Catherine Miles recreates life aboard this amazing vessel richly depicting the bravery and defiance of its shipwright 
captain, and doctor in one Irish family search for the American dream. So I had never heard of the Irish famine ship or the coffin ship. So my dad is a huge nonfiction reader. And when I saw this book, it sounded interesting. So I picked it up for myself. Next, I got The Obsidian Compass by Liesl Shirtliff. This is the second book in the Time Castaway series. I own the first book, so I thought it would be nice to have the second one. That way, if I enjoyed the first one, I can just continue right on with the series. Then I got The Lighthouse Between the Worlds by Melanie Crowder. And we're following Griffin and his father, and he ends up finding out that the lighthouse where Griffin and his father reside is actually a secret portal. His father ends up getting pulled through it, so Griffin has no choice but to go after him. So it sounds like a portal fantasy, and I'm very curious as to where the lighthouse leads. Next, I grabbed Hurricane Season by Nicole Melby. And it says inside, for Fig's dad, Hurricane Season brings the music. For Fig, Hurricane Season brings the possibility of disaster. So Fig is a sixth grader, and her dad is a renowned piano player who sometimes goes looking for music in the middle of the storm. So Fig is taking an art class at school to kind of have a better understanding of how artists work and Fig's dad shows up to the school looking for her, confused, and the class isn't bringing him closer to understanding him, but it also brings social services to their door, so it sounds like it's going to be a hard-hitting contemporary where Fig's dad is struggling and Fig is just trying to understand him, so I'm curious to see what is going on with Fig's dad and how I would assume hurricanes and music play a part in this story. Next, I've got Some Places More Than Others by Renee Watson. In this one, we're following Amara, who just wants to visit her father's family in New York City. And she really can't wait to get a look at where her father grew up. New York City isn't what she expected. And it says, as she explores, asks questions, and learns more and more about this place, her father and their history, she begins to realize how in some ways, more than others, she connects with him, her home, and her family. And she discovers even more about herself. So it sounds like a book of self-discovery and learning about one's history and seems quite interesting. Then I got The Guggenheim Mystery by Robin Stevens. So this is the sequel to The London Eye Mystery, and I believe The London Eye Mystery was written by somebody else. Yeah, because the in the back here it says that Siobhan Dowd uh, lived in Oxford until her death from cancer in August 2007, and she wrote The London Eye Mystery and was always intending to write a sequel. So it sounds like Robin Stevens picked up her story and decided to write the sequel that Siobhan Dowd couldn't. So at some point I will have to pick up the London Eye Mystery and read that before I can read this. Next, I grabbed Something Strange and Deadly by Susan Denard. I've been reading the Witchland series by Susan Denard and have really enjoyed it. It says the dead are on her heels, her life is on the line, and time is running out. So I think this is a bit of a zombie book. So it might be good for like October. And while this isn't a book I would normally pick up, I have really enjoyed Susan Denard's writing in the Witchland series, so I thought I would give this series a try. Next, I grabbed The Tragical Tale of Bertie Bloom. In the fairy tale kingdom of Wanderly, everyone has a role. Bertie Bloom is a tragical, doomed to an unhappy ending. She spends her days locked away with 17 other orphans at Foulweather's home for the tragical, where she's supposed to be learning to accept her fate. Agnes Prunella Crunch is a witch, the wicked kind, which means she's supposed to be perfecting her witchly cackle and flinging curses from the book of evil deeds. But lately, Bertie has been desperate for an escape, and Agnes has been in a bit of a witchy slump. The one thing they could both use is a friend, and with the help of some magical winds, a wayward letter, and a very unusual book, they might just find each other and together rewrite their story into one that, just between us, isn't very tragical at all. So this definitely sounds like two girls who are going to be choosing to be something different than what their fate says they should be, and becoming friends, and I love those kinds of stories, so it sounded interesting and I thought I'd give it a try. Plus I'm very curious to see if the dragon guy is uh somehow involved because I love me a good dragon. Next up I've got The Wizards of Once and Twice Magic by Chrissita Cowell. These are the first two books in the Wizards of Once series. Chrissita Cowell is the author of How to Train Your Dragon and I have heard a lot about these books on Gavin's channel as I believe he really really likes these books. I've also read How to Train Your Gavin and thought it was a really cute sweet novel so I'm definitely interested in checking out more by Christina Cowell and I'm looking forward to diving into this series since I have the first two books. Next is a complete cover by and that's The Bootlace Magician by K. 
Cassie Beasley. This is the sequel to Circus Mirandus, and I didn't know that when I picked this up. So I don't want to know what it's about, but it was a complete cover buy for me because I just thought the cover was really pretty. Next, I got The Starlight Slippers by Susan Maupin Schmid, and this is the third book in the 100 Dresses series. I have absolutely loved the first two books in this series. They're very whimsical, and we're following Darling Dimple, who lives in a castle and discovers a closet full of dresses that when you put them on, transforms you into somebody else. So I'm really looking forward to getting to read the next book in this series. Next, I got The Length of a String by Alyssa Brent Wiseman. And I've heard a lot about this, I want to say, on Amanda from the Curly Readers channel. I think that's who's been hyping this up. And it says Amani knows exactly what she wants as her big bat mitzvah gift to find her birth parents. So it sounds like we're going to be following Imani's journey to discover her birth parents. And I believe there's a really good friendship in this book. And that's part of why Amanda has loved it so much. I do think it's Amanda. Somebody definitely, if it's not Amanda, somebody definitely has mentioned this book multiple times recently. So I was really excited that I had a copy because they've made it sound really good. Next, I've got Five Worlds, The Sand Warrior by... Mark Siegel, Alexis Siegel, Xanthi Buma, Matt Rockefeller, and Boya Sun. This is a graphic novel. And it says, Five worlds on the brink of extinction. Can three unlikely heroes save the day? I've been getting more into graphic novels this year, and the premise of this sounded interesting, so I thought I'd pick it up. Next, I got The Metropolitans by Carl Goodman. It says, Four kids, four nights, four days to stop a world war. Madge, Joe, Kiku, and Walt. Each come to the Metropolitan Museum of Art for different reasons one day in 1941, but then the four joined forces to search for an ancient book of legends about King Arthur hidden somewhere in the museum. Nazi spies are using the book to send one another coded messages about a planned attack on American soil. If the kids find it, they could prevent the disaster and save hundreds of lives, but they don't realize the book has power behind anyone's imagination, and they're not the only ones determined to claim it. So it's a historical fiction novel, and obviously these four kids are going to be integral to thwarting this plot, so I'm very curious to see if they manage to do it and if they do how they go about doing it. Next, I got The No Good Nine by John Bemelman's Marciano. It says, do not read this book unless you like spending time with really bad kids. The No Good Nine are the kids your parents warned you to avoid. They lie, steal, run away from home, and even burn down Santa's toy factory. Anyway, Santa had it coming. He put coal in their stockings. Full of laughs and double crosses, this tongue-in-cheek romp is for readers who like their Christmas spirit irreverent rather than sentimental. I'm always looking for holiday type novels, so I will definitely be checking this out in December at Christmas time. Next, I picked up Al Defo by C.C. Bell, and this is another graphic novel, and I believe our main character is deaf, and that is basically why I picked it up, as I like the idea of having more deaf representation in books, and again, like I said earlier, I'm looking to read more graphic novels, so I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Next, I got More to the Story by Hannah Khan, and I believe I heard that this was a little woman retelling. So I don't really want to read what it's about, because if it's a little woman retelling, I'd rather wait until after I've read Little Women, which you saw I hauled earlier in this video and is definitely on the higher end of my TBR, but if so, I'm going to assume this follows four sisters, and if it is a retelling of Little Women, I'm going to be very curious to see how it compares to the original. Next, I have The Unmapped Chronicles, Casper Talk, and The Everdark Wings by Abby Elphinstone. The back says, The maps you know hold well known lines, shapes scored and inked in olden times, continents drawn and oceans named, peaks climbed and countries claimed. But maps hold secrets yet untold of places you should ink in gold. Up north, down south, far west and east, kingdoms full of magical beasts. It's hard to trust in words like these, but trust you must if you're to leave. So that sounds ominous. I'm going to assume that Casper Tot gets up to some sort of magical adventures in this and has to try to find his way out of whatever magical realm he's found himself in. Next, I have The Dragon Warrior by Katie Zoe, and Farron Liu might just be the fabled heaven breaker if she can prove herself first. It says, for fans of Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series and Roshani Chokshi's Aru Shah and the End of Time. So I love both of those series, and I'm going to assume this has some sort of mythology in it, since both Arusha and the Percy Jackson series are mythology-based books. And if so, I'm looking forward to learning about another culture's mythology. And finally, we're at the end. The last book I hauled is The Firefly Code by Megan Fraser Blakemore. 
Not everything is as perfect as it seems on Firefly Lane. Old Harmony is different from the outside world. Sheltered, ordered, and forward-thinking, this utopian community benefits from cutting-edge medical advances and genetic enhancements. For Maury and her friends, it's just regular life, and they've never known anything else. Until a new girl moves into the neighborhood. Alana is beautiful, athletic, smart, graceful, perfect. So perfect that Maury and her friends are curious. Where exactly did she come from? Why does she act so strangely sometimes? And when Alana's secret is finally revealed, the kids on Firefly Lane must decide. Is it time to start questioning the truths they've always been taught to believe? So I think this might be another one of the middle grade sci-fi books that I picked up. And if so, I'm really looking forward to checking it out because as I said earlier, I've been looking to find more middle grade sci-fi to read. So those are the ridiculous number of books I hauled in April, May, and June. In the comments section below, let me know which of these books you'd like me to get to first, especially if you've read them and think I would really enjoy them. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me book emojis since I hauled so many books. Like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!